Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out with John Rawlin, obviously BT Sport, anchor, pundit, commentator, do a bit of everything really, but boxing stalwart, I think it's fair to say. We're here for the press conference for the return to boxing to the Royal Albert Hall, historic venue, March the 8th. Just tell us how much it means to you and, and to the whole company, I guess, covering boxing at the Royal Albert Hall, which is you know, a venue steeped in boxing history, although not in recent times. Well, for me personally, it brings back some amazing memories, Danny, you know, going back to uh, the, well, to the mid 1980s. I, I remember seeing Lloyd Hunnigan uh, fight Maurice Blocker here in 1987. That was a world title fight. And I, I've seen Frank Bruno fight here, Gary Mason, Lennox Lewis against Glenn McCrory, that was here. Do you know, if you go back to the 1970s, Muhammad Ali fought three exhibition events here and I'm told there are something like 700 shows that have been here going back into the mists of time first one some hundred years ago so it's got an astonishing uh, tradition and it's going to be great to see it coming back so long it was synonymous with the old promoter Mike Barrett here and now Frank Warren bringing professional boxing back and I for one I'm absolutely delighted to see it here because it's it's an amazing atmospheric venue and I think that so far as Nicola's concerned she's going to love the fact that her world title fight is going to be on the same on the same stage where there have been so many great fights before. Well, I think we can say without checking box rec that it'll be the first ever women's world title fight at the Royal Albert Hall. Correct. So she's making history, which is great. It's just, no, no strangers to making history, Nicola Adams, of course. Well, no, and it, it's going to be, it's sort of going to have a crossover appeal, I think, isn't it? It's a lot of people will be aware of the fact that she's getting her world title opportunity it's going to have a crossover appeal it's not only going to be boxing fans who are, who are going to take notice of it i think just general sports fans and the fact it's here at the albert hall i think a lot of people are going to be wanting to say yeah i want to be there when nicola adams wins a world title if indeed she does run us through just some of the other main fights on the bill tell us your thoughts on them so first of all daniel dubois against razvan kajanu who we recently saw extending Nathan Gorman um, on the Manchester bill? Well, he went the distance with Nathan Gorman, didn't he? Who's probably a little bit busier than Daniel Dubois, but does he hit as hard as Daniel Dubois? Possibly not. Uh, Daniel had his own distance fight against uh, Kevin Johnson in October in, uh, in Leicester. So he's been in, in against a durable type last time around. I think if Daniel can get rid of him quickly, then it makes a bit of a statement. And we've seen the fight announced today, who hadn't seen it previously, Archie Sharp against Lucas Ballingall. That one's really excited me, having seen both of them fight. It's a big step up for Ballingall, but could end up stealing the show. It might be the best fight on the bill, this one. Uh, Archie Sharp did tremendously well beating Leon Woodstock in his last fight and I think surprised one or two people with such a, a, a really good technical performance. Uh, but this lad coming up from the south coast, Ballingall, you know, he's, he, he's got belief. He's undefeated in 11 fights, is it? And he's going to go into it thinking that he can provide an upset and it might just be the fight of the night. Before we let you go to go and man the top table, as you're, you know, expert at... Just a quick word on Liam Williams. After his great performance against Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Heffron, Mark Heffron, I should say, back in December, he looked amazing. I think most people thought he'll then advance to bigger and better things from there. Instead, he said, no, I want to be busy. I want to be active. I'm going to stay at middleweight for now, defend my British title against Joe Mullander. How much respect does that endow from you for Liam Williams? Well, he, he's, remember, that was his first fight as a middleweight when he beat Mark Heffron. So uh, maybe he's wanting to commercially cash in on the fact that he's won that, he's had that fantastic performance. I think for Liam, it's, uh, it's again, a, a chance to be on a big stage. And, you know, against Mark Heffron, he was pretty much punch perfect. That was a superb performance from Liam Williams. And if he can produce something similar against Joe Mullander, then, you know, he moves on and he's right up there with our very, very best middleweights in the country. John, we really appreciate your time. We look forward to listening to more of your insight on the 8th of March. Okay, mate. Brilliant. Talk to you soon.